तव कथात तप्त जीवन कविरीड़ कलमशापम श्रवणमंगल श्रीमदादत भुवि गृणंती ये भूरीदा जना श्री श्री रामकृष्ण कथामृत श्रीमकथित द गॉस्पल ऑफ श्री रामकृष्ण एज रिकॉर्डेड बाय एम श्री महेंद्रनाथ गुप्ता ए डिसाइपल एंड अपोस्टल द मास्टर श्री रामकृष्ण भक्त संगे कमल कुटीरे श्री रामकृष्ण और श्रीयुक्त केशव चंद्र सेन श्री रामकृष्ण इन द कंपनी ऑफ डिवोटीज इन कमल कुटीर इन द कंपनी ऑफ केशव चंद्र सेन एंड अदर्स श्रीयुक्त त्रैलोक्य गान गायते छेन गान गायते गायते सन्धार बाति जला हईल गान चलते लागिल त्रैलोक्य नाथ सन्नाल वज सिंगिंग एंड एज यू वज सिंगिंग इट जस्ट बिकेम डस्क संध्या द टू लाइट एंड द लाइट्स वेर लाइटेड लिट गान सुनते सुनते ठाकुर हटा दंडायमान आर मार नाम करते करते समाधिस्थ किंचित प्रकृतस्थ हा निजे नृत्य करते करते गान धरिले सो एज ही वॉज लिस्निंग टू द सॉन्ग श्री रामकृष्ण स्टार्ट रिपीटिंग द नेम ऑफ मदर स्टूडअप कंप्लीटली अब्सॉर्ब इन समाधि At that time, the picture was taken, which we see, Hridayaram is supporting him. <coughs> that was the famous picture. It was is standing like that. So after he re regained some normal consciousness, he started dancing and sang the following song. सुरा पान करीना सुदा खाई जय कल मनु माताले माताल कर मधु माताले माताल बोले सुरा पान करीना आई आई डोट आई डोट ड्रिंक वाइन बट सुदा खाई आई कंस्यूम अ ड्रिंक द नेक्टर सुधा अमृता टेकिंग द नेम ऑफ काली मनु माताले माताल कर <clears throat> my mind becomes intoxicated like a drunkard and those who look up on this stage state of intoxication think that i have drunk wine sri ramakrishna always used to say unless you get something higher the lower cannot be given up this is a very standard principle in spiritual life in as in any life in order to give up the lower you have to take something higher there is a famous principle which is usually attributed to albert einstein in which he says a scientific principle no problem can be solved at the same level at which the problem was initially created a very interesting statement i repeat the statement no problem can be solved at the same level at which the problem was initially created if a problem is created at a lower level in order to solve the problem you have to go to a higher level so that the problem is solved the two ways in which the problem is solved one is to find a solution at the same level but that solution once again contains within it other problems you try to solve it at that level then many other problems then arise and so on so no problem can be solved at the same level at which the problem was initially created so when you go to higher level the problem is solved by becoming dissolved <laughs> so you should make a distinction between solving a problem and dissolving a problem 
the problem becomes solved because the problem ceases to exist having been dissolved at a higher level of consciousness. I'll give a simple example. Suppose a tiger is chasing you in dream and you run and run and run. The, the most serious problem of your life, life and death problem. And you pers perspire, you are about to swoon, suddenly you wake up. Then you say there is no tiger, there is nobody chasing you. And you feel so terribly relieved. Was the problem solved? Yes. Not at that level of the dream in which you could escape the tiger, but at a different level of consciousness called the waking state in which the problem ceases to be a problem. The problem of the chasing tiger was solved by the problem having been dissolved at a different level of consciousness. So you make a distinction between solving a problem at the same level at which the problem is initially created, which contains within it another problem. You solve that problem, you go to a different problem and so on. Endlessly you keep solving a problem at the same level, inviting another problem, solving that problem, creating another problem, and so on and on and on. Now, if there is a change of consciousness, you raise the consciousness to a different level, then the problem just dissolves in that consciousness and therefore ceases to be a problem. Can you call it solving a problem? Yes and no. The problem was solved not at the same level by seeking a solution at that level, but by the problem having been transcended and dissolved at a different level of consciousness. I can quote an example from my own life. I had gone for Durga Puja in Bombay. 25, 30 years ago. So, the Swami in charge there, he requested me to bring some things from Calcutta because those things were not readily available at Bombay, the Chandmala, for example, for the decoration. The various kinds of uh, decorative pieces. So, he took quite a, f a f few pieces traveling by train and the train stops in the Dadar station just for two minutes. I was in a great hurry to get down. But just about to get down, in my hurry and anxiety, I just forgot the Chandamala and got down. When I reached the ashrama, the Swami in charge asked me, hey, where are the Chandmalas? Have you brought them? Then I said, oh, Maharaj, I've forgotten it. I felt so bad. Then he said, no, no, don't worry. We'll purchase something. I'll get somebody else to get it. I felt so terribly upset. How could I make such a stupid mistake? I regretted and regretted. Anyway, nothing could be done. So after a few days, because my unconscious mind was so deeply affected by this mistake, I had a dream. I was traveling in a train and I was carrying a bag containing very important documents relating to something. As in the waking state, the forgetting of the Chandamala, I got down from the train I forgot that box containing very important documents, got down. After the train had left, I remembered I had forgotten. I was chasing the train, the train had left. So I chased and chased, talked to the station master. I went up to 
the yard at which the train was finally positioned i was panting i was sweating i was crying sunday woke up what a relief i have solved the problem of the missing box <laughs> now tell me have i solved the problem of the missing box the answer is yes and no no because i did not solve the problem of the missing box by finding the box in the same state of consciousness at which i lost it in the dream yes because the problem of the missing box no longer exists because i moved on to a different state of consciousness this is an extremely important scientific and spiritual phenomenon which we need to think about sri ramakrishna solved all problems of life swami brahmananda swami vivekananda sri sarada devi many of the direct disciples are all of them how could they live in this world with all the problems they lived in this world because they transcended the problem of living in the world by moving on to a higher level of consciousness that is the only permanent solution to all the problems that we are facing don't chase the problems at that level <coughs> and try to solve them at that level you may try and try but every solution that you get of a problem at that level will engender newer and newer problems to solve and you will be caught in a chain of endless problems with endless solutions giving rise to newer and newer problems and you end up by being caught in a mesh in a network of unsolved problems at that level that's a very interesting phenomenon in life so spiritual solution to any problem says <clears throat> solve the problem by moving on to a different level of consciousness just like the problem of the missing box and the missed chandmala or the chasing tiger these problems in the dream state have been solved by moving on to the waking state which is a totally different state of consciousness resulting in the dissolution of the problem rather than solution of the problem at that level of consciousness think about this very carefully meditate upon this this is what is known as the spiritual solution to your problem seek a spiritual solution Swami Brahmananda Swami Vivekananda the Holy Mother Sharada Devi of course Ramakrishna they all the time solved the problems by moving on to a different level and <clears throat> thereby spiritually solving those problems by dissolving the problem <laughs> the problem ceases to be a problem and therefore there is no problem to be solved <laughs> in Vedanta this is called amani bhava suppose a thought disturbs you your mind is agitated you become confused you cry you're worried about something however much you try however much you meditate however much you chant however much you pray this thought just doesn't leave you we see that every day in life and you go to a psychiatrist you go to take pills you take a, a sleeping pills to be able to sleep once again that is moving on to a different state i can't bear this sorrow anymore 
somebody has betrayed me i emotionally i am broke i can't bear this so you take a deep sleeping pill and very often unfortunately people take the alcohol to be able to forget this problem drugs alcoholism sleeping pills why because they move on to a different state called sleep in which the problem of the waking state doesn't exist but unfortunately they come back the same problem persists when you drink wine you move on to a different state of consciousness unconscious and subconscious where you think this problem doesn't exist the same pattern so now can you apply the same principle of alcoholism drug addiction to a spiritual solution this was ramakrishna is hinting because why he is using these examples is because our minds are so worldly full of temptations tinged and colored with hundreds of thousands of desires ambitions bickerings acrimony hatred kama krodha lobha moha mada matsarya lust anger delusion pride envy greed our minds are full of these now we understand the worldly solution alcoholism drug addiction they are extreme cases which no spiritual aspirant worth the name resorts to but we resort to if at all praying to god and crying to him or calling up some friends and say oh i am so broke that from them the other side he or she is also equally broke <laughs> and you get some kind of a consolation which doesn't last long then go on a pilgrimage or go on a long trip carrying the problem in your heart all the time <laughs> can you kill the problem by killing the mind killing thought the problem arises in thought in the mind and disturbs you endlessly can you kill it by killing the mind itself can thought and the mind commit suicide can you commit mental suicide thought should come to an end the mind becomes no mind manas becomes amani bhava amani bhava the mandukya etc is mentioned which means the mind becoming mindless or no mind the problems arise in the mind and the problems will cease to be when the mind is killed change of consciousness from the waking state to the dream state and vice versa solves the problem to some extent but the problem doesn't go because the mind still exists and persists go to a higher level of consciousness you get a higher mind even that is not the solution the vijnanamaya so go still higher the anandamaya still higher beyond nandamaya pranamaya manomaya vijnanamaya anandamaya and you enter into a state in which the mind just ceases to exist or to put it positively the mind itself takes the form of brahman everything becomes brahmamaya the whole world gets transformed as brahmamaya the form of brahman and there is no problem there is no solution <laughs> and there is no you or i to face the problem to be solved it may appear very theoretical utopian almost impossible but the sages and saints over millennia upon millennia have proved realized and documented their experiences to show that this is possible 
these documents are called the great scriptures of the uh, world religions the gita the upanishads now the latest the kathamrita in hinduism and the other religions in the world all the saints and sages incarnations of god have testified that this is possible <laughs> Two important paths have been prescribed: the path in which the mind and the ego are completely killed by surrender to God. The mind is surrendered to God; all the thoughts become godly. Then the mind ceases to be the mind. The Bhagavad Gita. exhorts arjuna in krishna krishna says through arjuna all of us manumana bhava mad bhakto madya jeevam namaskuru manumana your mind should become me mad bhakta you become completely devoted to me madya ji worship me maam namaskuru you prostrate before me you means the ego the ego the mind everything prostrates flat before god gets dissolved in his divine majestic vast infinite presence maye va mana adhatsva maye buddhim niveshaya completely fix your mind upon me and make your buddhi your intelligence intellect merge in me niveshaya just like the rivers enter the ocean completely lose their individuality and ceases to be rivers anymore the mind when it fixed up the lord and made it enter into the being of god the mind ceases to be the mind yatha nadyas chandamana samudre astam gachanti nama rupe vihaya tatha vidwan nama rupa advimukta parat param purusham upaiti divyam mundakopanishad just like all the rivers enter the ocean and lose their individuality as different rivers with different names and forms ganga yamuna kaveri all of them lose their individuality their separate names and forms and are called just the ocean in exactly the same way the sage the man of knowledge enters into brahman becomes one with it completely loses his individual existence his ego and the mind <clears throat> the individual mind no longer exists there is only the huge cosmic mind the hiranyagarbha ishwara this is one path the path of bhakti or devotion in the path of knowledge you go for vichara inquire deeply inquire go deeper and deeper and deeper into your innermost consciousness and ask who is this i koham who am i when you go on inquiring as ramakrishna says just like peeling of an onion if you keep on peeling the onion layer by layer ultimately you see there is nothing no kernel at all inside <clears throat> so what you have inside is nothingness the void the shunya which is another name for purnata which is the atman vedanta calls this the atman the purna buddhism the particular the madhyamika buddhism called the shunya shunya is complete void of any individuality or duality or relative existence so when you ask koham two parts come to you naham naham tu hu tu hu which is the path of bhakti not i not i but thou o lord soham soham the path of knowledge i am that infinite self i am that infinite consciousness aham vrikshasya reriva kirti prishtam gireriva urdha pavitro vajane vasvamritam asmi dravinagam savarchasam sumedha amrito kshitah 
Taitriya Upanishad. Trishanku, the great sage, sang about his realization in this way. I am that infinite ocean of consciousness. My majesty, my glory is like that of a huge Himalayan mountain, immeasurably great. And I am the root of the entire tree of relative existence. Ashtavakra Samhita, for example. Glorious descriptions of the realization of the infinitude which the sage feels when he realizes that Brahman. Mayananta maham bodho ascharyam jiva vichayaha ujjanti granti khelanti pravishanti svabhavataha May Ananta Maham Bodho, I am that infinite ocean of consciousness. In that infinite ocean of consciousness, which is my real nature, waves rise, so many worlds and jivas, beings, living, non living beings, various worlds, jagat, all of them arise like waves in the infinite ocean which I am remain for some time and then get merged in the same infinite ocean. I am that infinite ocean of consciousness. Just even to think about these realizations, chant these lokas and meditate upon them gives you such an enormous elevation. All your depression goes away. This is the Vedantic psychotherapy which was popularized in the modern times of Swami Vivekananda. Swami was very fond of Ashtavakra Samhita. Initially, he was reluctant. But Sri Ramakrishna almost forced him to read it till what he read entered deep into his consciousness and completely transformed the crying Vivekananda, always feeling, I am low, I am small into a paragon of Vedantans and with tremendous conviction he preached it to the world stage, in the world pulpit. He was under the influence of Brahma Samaj. He said, Oh Lord, you are the king and the lord of all the worlds, the three worlds you rule over. And I'm a beggar, penniless, akinchan, bikhari, orphaned. I have nothing. How can I ask you, O oh infinite, majestic Lord, to come and stay in my heart? This was Narendranath. <laughs> <coughs> Ami Vikari Anat Kemone Boli Votoma Esho Mama Rudaye Jabe Kedi Nomar. One of the two earliest songs which is sang before Sri Ramakrishna Jabe Kedi Nomar. Manu Chalo Nijaniketone. That was Narendranath. <laughs> Remember how Narendranath, the crying, uh, sinking himself to despicable, poor, beggarly, was transformed by the Medas touch of Sri Ramakrishna, the golden touch into a paragon of Advaitins. That Swami Vivekananda, that Narendranath transformed as Swami Vivekananda crying with his clarion call in the world stage. What did he say? Never forget the glory of human nature. Buddhas and Christ are but the waves of the infinite ocean which I am. 
I am that infinite ocean of consciousness. And the various incarnations, what to speak of the ordinary jivas, buddhas and Christ were the ways which I am. I identify myself, identify myself with an infinite formless ocean of consciousness, which is formless, which is nameless, which is beyond Shabda Sparsha Rupa Rasagandha. Ashabda Masparsha Marupa Mabhyayam Tatharasam Nitya Magandha Vachayat Anadjanantam Mahatav Param Dhruvam Nichayatan Murtya Mukhat Pramuchyate Katho Parishat Realizing that which is beyond Shabda Sparsha Rupa Rasagandha which is eternal Nitya which is beyond time, space and causation, one goes beyond death. Tameva viritva atimrutyu meti nanyav pantha vidyate ayanaya Realizing him alone, you go beyond death. Nanyav pantha vidyate ayanaya there is no other path except this. <laughs> these are not mere stories, these are not mere words. They are charged with the pratyaksha anabhuti, direct realization, the sakshad, aparokshad, brahma anabhuti, direct perception, immediate perception and realization of the infinite and the absolute Brahman. Escape this, if you like, into the higher realization. People say, oh, you people have escaped into sannyasa, escaped into the monastery in order to solve the problems of the worldly life. <laughs> The answer to that is, everybody escapes. You escape through touring, moving around and seeing places. Somebody escapes through alcoholism and drug. Somebody escapes through engaging oneself in writing books and songs and so on. At slightly higher level, somebody escapes in social service, selfless service. Again, the sorrow comes back. So why not escape through a higher realization of the God's infinite majesty and glory? <laughs> Sri Ramakrishna was called Pagol, <laughs> a crankish, mad person. Sri Ramakrishna did not protest. He said, yes, of course I am mad. <laughs> but isn't everybody mad? Jogatish <laughs> Hokalito Pagol. Kew Takar Juna Pagol, Kew Padir Juna Pagol, Kew Mir Juna Pagol. Pratteka Jogan Vivinakam Pagala Mecha, I'm Ishwara Juna Pagal Halam Tataki. Everybody is mad, somebody is mad after a woman, somebody is mad after money, somebody is mad after power and position. For a change, let me be mad after God. What is that to you? So this is the surest way of solving. Nanyav pantha vidyate ayanaya. There is just no other way to have a permanent solution to the problems of sorrow. Tarati shokam matmavit. Repeatedly this has been mentioned in our scriptures, the Upanishads and the Gita. Only the realization of the Atman or Brahman can solve the problem of sorrow, take you beyond sorrow. Arjuna, who was depressed, who was sorrowing, was given the highest medicine of Atma Jnana. Bhagavan Bhashyagara Shankara, the great commentator, asks this question. Why is it that Arjuna was given this highest medicine of Atma Jnana in order to take him away from this depression? Then he says, Arjuna was immersed and drowning in that Mahadathi, the great ocean of sorrow, Shoka Moha, sorrow and delusion, 
because of the arising of the feeling of I and mine. Aham esham mama ete iti bhranti pratyaya nimitta. Because of this bhranti pratyaya, <coughs> the wrong notion, the confused understanding that these people are mine and I am theirs. Because of this feeling, Arjuna became terribly upset and depressed and he was about to be drowned in this terrible ocean of shoka moha, sorrow and delusion. And realizing that the only way to rescue Arjuna from this terrible sorrow, to lift him up from this ocean of sorrow and delusion, the only way is Atma Jnana. And therefore Bhagavan started his teaching by saying, Ashochyanan vashochastvam pragyavadascha bhashase gatasu nagatasuscha nanushochanti panditaha. Panditaha, those who are wise people, those who are sages and saints, <coughs> those who have realized their real nature, they do not worry about who is living and who is dead. Appears to be very harsh. But the real puppet is birth and death are only shadows, delusions, relating to the body and the mind, which once again are passing faces, shadows of the infinite reality, of the Atman which alone is real. Only this can solve the problem of sorrow. That such a deep import this Kathamrita verses have. So I don't drink wine, but I drink the nectar of the divine name of Mother Kali. Those who look upon me from outside think I'm deeply drunk. When people used to see Sri Ramakrishna, some of the drunkards who knew about the effect of wine used to say, Oh, he is dead drunk. <coughs> he told Girish Chandra Ghosh and Kalipada Ghosh, <laughs> the two great bohemian drunkard disciples, Hey, what kind of drink you have? I have much a superior drink which is imported from the uh, from abroad. Just a little piece, little sip, and you will get intensely intoxicated. Girish Ghosh said, what is this? There is no brand of wine which I have not tasted. Then Sri Ramakrishna said, it is the wine of Divine Mother's Kali's name. <laughs> Once when Sri Ramakrishna had gone to the Kali temple, finding his no room empty, Holy Mother Sharada went quickly went to his room, was sweeping the floor and tidying the bed and so on. By the time Sri Ramakrishna came back, and reeling, as it were, under intoxication. His eyes were red, and his speech was not very clear. His steps were faltering, and when the mother was sweeping the floor, could not see Sri Ramakrishna enter, he entered the room and pushed her aside. He was, she was startled. Then looked at him. Immediately she could understand the state of his mind. Then Sri Ramakrishna says, Ami ki maut khechi. Have I drunk wine? <laughs> then mother said, No, no, no. Why should you do that? Maut khabe kano. Tahale ergam tolchi kano. Why am I faltering? Why am I shaking like this? I am unable to walk steadily. <laughs> Then the mother said, You have drunk the Bhavamrita, the divine nectar of Mother Kali's Bhava, the great spiritual moods. Then Sri Ramakrishna was intensely pleased. Thik bala cho, thik bala cho. <laughs> Meditate on these scenes. 
these scenes have been created by the divine incarnation in this age for us to meditate upon and get mukti the avatara comes the bhagavata says essentially to release people from bondage take them out of delusion what is the easiest way <coughs> leela chintana think of the divine leela if there is no leela how can you think about it he creates hundreds of thousands of themes for meditation and upasana so you take any scene from ramakrishna's life for example the scene which i described just now think of this Sri Ramakrishna moving from the Kali temple to his room, fully intoxicated with the Divine Mother's name, and absorbed in her consciousness, with faltering steps, eyes red, and speech unclear, and pushing the mother, and asking. আমি কি মদ খেয়েছি তাহলে টলছি কেন দ্য মাদার রিপ্লাইং তুমি খালির ভাব আমরা খেয়েছো অ্যান্ড শ্রীরামকৃষ্ণ ইনসেন্টেন্সলি প্লিজ হ্যাঁ ঠিক বলেছো ঠিক বলেছো থিঙ্ক অফ দিস সিন দ্যাট সল্ভ অ্যান্ড মুক্তি ইজ জাস্ট কারা তারা আম লাগবে জাস্ট ইউ হ্যাভ মুক্তি জাস্ট লাইক দ্যাট দি ফ্রুট অ্যান্ড ওয়ান্স ফার্ম ইট ইজ সো সিম্পল hundreds of thousands of such scenes have been created by the avatara hmm. how simple how so that that is the beauty of reading these books the kathamrita is the uh, documented authentic version of sri ramakrishna leela just like the leela prasanga divine play of sri ramakrishna the avatar shura pan kurinami shura khai joy kali bole manu matale matal kore madhu matale matal bole people call me a drunkard but i have not drunk wine i drink the divine intoxicated intoxicating liquor of divine mother kali's name gurudatt shud loye pravrutte tai mosala diye gyan shudite chwar bhati pan kore mor manu matale the my mind which is intoxicated which is my mind which is a drunkard takes the divine powerful power packed mantra given by the guru the maha mantra then with the mashala of the pravritti i prepare this wine in the gyan shurite in the cauldron of knowledge in gyana and that i drink all the time and get intoxicated mool mantra যন্ত্র ভরা শোধন করি বলে তারা প্রসাদ বলে এমন সুরা খেলে চতুর্বর্গ মিলে রামপ্রসাদ কমলাকান্ত হৌ সিম্পলি হৌ ডিরেক্টলি হৌ স্ুইটলি দে স্যাং দি সংস ইট ইজ দেয়ার ইন অল দ্য ট্রেডিশনস ইন অল দ্য ল্যাঙ্গুয়েজ অল ওভার অল ওভার ইন্ডিয়া whether they go to the tamil nadu whether they go to karnataka whether they go to andhra pradesh or kerala in the south or go to rajasthan and go to uttar pradesh or go to uttarakhand gujarat maharashtra and of course bengal anywhere in the world from kashmir to kanyakumari from mathura to assam the links and breadth of india every place in india is filled with such scenes and songs in all the languages that are available for us to sing meditate and become illumined ram prasad says prepare this kind of wine 
in your mind and keep drinking this divine, divinely intoxicating wine of, mother, of uh, God's name. That name is with us. When somebody asks Ramakrishna in the Kathamrita, in the Gospel, I am unable to concentrate, I am unable to meditate, what should I do? Then Sri Ramakrishna says, Smaran Manantu Ache. Smarana and Manana. Finding Ananda in Smarana. Swami Smarana Ananda, or the most revered president of the order at present. <laughs> Once I asked him, Mara, what a beautiful name you have got. <laughs> Find joy in Smarana. Smarana means thinking of God, meditating upon Him, musing about Him, in whatever way, <clears throat> contemplating Him, Smarana Manana. Then Nidhid Shasana will follow automatically when the intensity of your devotion becomes very high. So it's a great joy. Spiritual journey is a great joy. Don't think it is a very tough and dry journey. And rejoice and be exceeding glad as Christ has said. You can move around and with God's Leela Chintana thinking of the Leela of God, the divine play of the Avatara, and you become intoxicated. Sri Yukta Keshap Ke Thakur Snehapurna Nayane Dekhi Techen. Sri Ramakrishna is looking at Keshap with great love. Jana Koto Apnar Lok. As if he has been known to him for aeons and ages. He is Antaranga, so close to him, well known. Ar jano bhai kori te chen, keshav paache anno karo arthat rangshare hon. And he is terribly afraid, extremely filled with fear, lest keshav chandra sen thinks himself as belonging to somebody else that means the samsara, the world. Keshav, you are mine. Don't go to this world, the worldly attractions and get lost. This is Ramakrishna's lessons for us. So Ramakrishna says, my devotees, where are you, my children? He, Dubahu tulie da ke aire tora ai chole toder tore kripa kore boshe achi virale eshe che no tono manos dek vijodi ai chole. The famous song which is sung in the morning, Usha Kirtan, Sramakrishna's birthday, song written by Devendra Bajumdar, the householder disciple of Sramakrishna. So he raises both arms and asks people, where are you, my children? I'm just waiting for you. Come, come unto me, ye that are weary and heavy laden, and I will give thee rest. These are the words of Christ in the Bible. I will give you rest. Come unto me. All the avatars have said this. Avayam sarvabhute byodaram yetat pratam mama. Ramachandra says, I give fearlessness, abhaya to all beings, that is my vow, vrata. Sarva dharman parityajya maam ekam sharanam braja, aham tva sarva pape bhyo moksha ishyami mashucha. Sri Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita. All the incarnations of God have repeatedly testified, declared, come unto me. Be fearless. Rejoice and be exceeding glad. I will give you infinite joy, infinite bliss. Remove all the sorrow. Ma shucha. Don't be sorrowful. Don't belong to the somebody else. You belong to me. Somebody means the samsara, the world. So he is looking at Keshab. He is afraid as it were that Keshab could belong to the samsara and therefore he looks at him with great compassion, 
infinite motiveless love and sings the following song tahar dikhe takaiya abar gaan dhure len is a beautiful touching song which he sings again with respect to narendra nath <laughs> kotha bolte dorai na bolile o dorai mone shondho hoy pache tomar dhone harai harai <laughs> harai rai means the, the divine lord the mahaprabhu oh lord i am afraid to speak and afraid not to speak also and a doubt has arisen in my mind lest i lose you toma harai you are my treasure you are my thana you are my wealth i am afraid lest i lose you harai amra jani je mon tor dilam tore ei mantor samakshna used to make a pun he was a master of pun on the word mantra mantra means a divine mystic syllable which we get from the guru the mantra mantra is pronounced in colloquial bengali as mantor and he used to make pun on this word mon tor tor means yours mon means the mind the mind is yours so the guru says amra jani je mon tor the guru gives the mantra and says now mon tor now it's your path to take this mantra repeat it and get elevated dilam tore shei mon tor e mantor to dilam i have given you this great mantra maha mantra ekhon mon tor <laughs> now it's up to you your mind will know what to do with this je mantra vipadate tori torai i given you that mantra which will save you from great catastrophe and terrible dangers it will save you mananad trayate iti mantra mantra is called mantra man, man means mananat tra means trayate that which rescues you saves you protects you in great danger from catastrophe rescues you that is called a mantra amra jani je mantor dilam tore shei mantor ekhon mon tor orthat sob tyag kore bhagwan ke dak tini shotto ar sob nitya take na lab korle kichhi holo na ei maha mantra this is the essence of the teachings of the avatara essence of the kathamrata repeatedly sri ramakrishna says give up everything and call on god about the gita he said you know what is the essence of the gita you will get it by repeating it 10 10 times gita 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 means becomes ta gita gita gi tagi means tyagi both are same that means give up everything which is worldly which is apart from god and take refuge in god sarva dharman parityajya mam ekam sharanam vrja take refuge in the refuge in god take labh na korle kichhi holo na karan tini satto asab nitya god alone is real all else is unreal and unless you realize god nothing really matters iha cheda vedit atha satyam asti na chediha vedin mahati vinashti if you realize the truth in this very life then your life becomes blessed if you do not then great is your loss terrible catastrophe what is that punarapi jananam punarapi maranam punarapi janani jathare shayanam birth after birth 
death after death go round and round and round infinitely in the cycle of births and deaths get released from here and the avatar has come and giving you the surest and the easiest of paths raja vidya raja gukham pavitram idam uttamam pratyakshavagamam dharmyam susukham kartum avyayam very easy what is that shravana manana of the avatar leela think about him manmana bhava madhubhakto madhyaji maam namaskuru thinking of the lord meditating upon him constantly getting lost in his glory easiest way susukham kartum avyayam is eternal will be the result that you get out of it the phala abhar upaveshan kuriya bhakta darshange katha koi dechen again he sat down and started talking to the devotees tahake jol khaiwar jonno udyog hoyteche hall ghorer ek pashe ekti brahma bhakto piano bajaite chen they were arranging to offer him some sweets and water just a hospitality because a holy man should not go away from a householder's house without being fed that's the tradition grasthe ramangal hobe bola the holy householder will get with harm will befall him if a holy man leaves without being properly fed one corner of the hall there is a piano and one of the brahma bhaktas was playing on the piano sri ramakrishna hashyavadan balaker nyay piano ka chhe gaya dadaiya dekhe te chen sri ramakrishna was smiling like a child when near the piano and curiously looking on how this is being played ek to pori antapure taake luiya jawa hoilo jol khai jol khai ben are mayor of pranam kori ben all the women were inside the antapura the inner courtyard so sam krishna was taken inside all the women will bow down to him make pranam and he will be given some sweets and water by the women devotees thakur sam krishna jala seva hoilo ei bare din gaadite uthilen so after eating something he came out and he entered the carriage ब्राह्म भक्त सकले गाड़ी का दाड़ी आल दि ब्राह्म डिफोटीज वेर स्टैंडिंग नियर दि कैरेज विच इज जस्ट अबाउट टू मुव कमल कुटीर हईते गाड़ी दक्षिणेश्वर मंदिर अभिमुखे जत्रा कर लो सो फ्रम कमल कुटीर केशव चंद्र सें प्लेस दि कैरेज इज मुविंग टूवर्ड दक्षिणेश्वर सो दिस आर ग्रेट सीन्स विच आर क्रिएटेड read this think about this meditate upon this rejoice and be exceeding glad tushant cha ramant cha the gita says in the 10th chapter 9th verse 10.9 mad bhakta mad gata prana bodhayanta parasparam kathayantascha maam nityam tushant cha ramant cha my devotees mad bhakta mad gata prana those who have all the energies and prana completely absorbed in me gone to me bodhayanta parasam talking to each other about me kasayanta cha maam nityam constantly discussing me thinking of me meditating of me dushyanta cha ramanta cha they rejoice and they are extremely happy let us also think of the divine leela every little scene ramakrishna talking to keshav ramakrishna singing ramakrishna going to samadhi ramakrishna suddenly getting absorbed in the infinite mood of uh, the highest samadhi coming back like a child standing in the, the piano and watching how the piano is being <laughs> played ramakrishna uh, uh, drinking water ramakrishna coming or always sahasravadan always a smile on his lips with immersed in the divine bliss so let us all pray that a particle of that divine bliss should come to us preme ke bindum charadagda chitte vishancha chittam kuruna sushantam swami abhedanand the famous him and the mother he says preme ke bindum one particle of the divine prema divine love of god pour into my heart 
which is dry parched and make my heart calm peaceful and full of joy that is the prayer om niranjanam nityam ananta roopam bhaktanukam padhrita vigraham vai ishavataram parameshami dyam tam ramakrishnam shirasa namamah om shant 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 he hari hi om tat sat shri ramakrishnarpanamastu